All right, guys, uh, good morning to you. It's Sam here. It's Monday, December 18th. I uh, had a member requesting a look at Digibyte. Uh, so I've got Digibyte here to Bitcoin. This is the eight hour. So uh, just as a quick reference, uh, as I always suggest that you do, if you're not familiar with the coin, come on over to CoinGecko. Take a look at where it ranks on their scale. I always encourage you to consider coins with uh, a scoring of 50 or higher. I'll let you read about their, their scoring system here. But this at 62, this is a major player. We've got a market cap of 335 million. So you know, they've been around for almost four years. So this is a, a substantial crypto coin. Lots of uh, opportunity for you if you're interested in doing a little more digging into what they're all about. So that's why I like CoinGecko as a reference here. We can also look at where the the volume is and where uh, the bulk of it is. It's almost 98.7% I mean, of it is to Bitcoin. And the bulk of that is on Bitrex here. Bitrex and Polo are, are where you're seeing all the volume. So let's go over and look at it on uh, on uh, Bittrex here. So this is the eight hour, just to give you some perspective of where we've been and what what's been happening. So this again is a very very common uh, chart that we see in uh, the the alt space here. So where we had the the, the first big run up, uh, you know, earlier in the year. That's early summer, and then with the long long winter of alts that we've seen, right? So it's always challenging for anything that's spread to Bitcoin, given the tear in Bitcoin. Uh, you know, for that, that, that certainly affected the alt. So you can see this long, long, long sideways. And we've, we now, now we're getting the attempt here. We've broken through the Vegas wave, but we've done that before. This was one I remember these where it, it, it would appear that a new trend was under, underway. You can almost see the five wave structure there. And they, they've just failed. They've just continued to fail. Well, now we're getting signs of this again. So Alt bulls, you know, I'm getting a lot of requests to look at the alts. And so I thought we'd uh, get down here and see if there's anything here that we can take advantage of. So come, let's go down to the one hour. Where we can get a look at what's happening here now. So, you know, so looking here, so you can see this is part of that sideways action here. Can I get a count on that? Yeah, I could squeeze a count out. Does it is it relevant? Does it matter? Not really. This is our low that we're working from, and this is where we start to get some structure that can be meaningful to us. So you can see I've already got a count on this, and this is very easy to spot, easy on the eye. So we can see a one, two. Here's our three, and now we've got this this big move here. Now this is just the preliminary count. This is certainly subject to to being relabeled. It, 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 but right now it would appear that we have. A leading diagonal. Leading diagonal is found in the one wave or the A wave. So it doesn't surprise me here that we're getting a diagonal. So we, we get a one, two. Here's the overlap of the one, thus the diagonal. So we, we get the big move here, and then we get a one, two, three, four, five into the five. So this certainly plays technically. And if we make the assumption that we have a completed five wave structure, well, now this is the correction of that. So we'd be looking for the, the uh, fib relationships from the are low to what is now the completion of that five wave structure. Now, if I open this up a little bit, you can see a pretty nice A wave here underway. So we've got a one, a, a one, two, three, four, five. So that five wave would imply that that's our A wave of the correction. We get a little one, two, three into the B. And now it's a question of where are we going to find that C? Now, Here's where a little Elliot can be beneficial to us in some of that statistical uh, uh, work that we look at and that I work with my members on. So knowing that a two wave can go anywhere anywhere from a 50 to the 786, that's the zone statistically where we'd anticipate seeing a second wave. Now, the highest probability zone is between the 50 and the 618, statistically. But they can go as deep as the 786 as it's a, it's a fight to establish a new trend. That, thus the diagonal, that's why you find diagonals in the first wave. But right now, this is, I mean, pretty much by the book, right? So it's, 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 it's almost, <laughs> sometimes they're, they're, they're so good, you know, it almost doesn't seem like real. Like, could it really be that, that easy to spot? Well, there's my five wave A. I got a three wave B. Well, I know that a B wave can go anywhere from 50 to the 786. So if I Look at the reaction or the retracement of my A wave, I should say. Where do we go? Right into our little hot box that I've shown you hundreds of times where we get the algo reaction here. So we have right into the box between the 618 and the 65. Could, couldn't have scripted that any better for a B wave. So given that, there's the negative 23. So if I, 
if I wiggle that, do you see that, that green line down here? That's our negative 23. So that's the algo target, which happens to line up quite nicely with our range here that we would anticipate seeing a reaction coming back the other way. So we, now we, we don't know that the C wave gets down there. Just because the algo target is there doesn't mean it must get there. That's where we would anticipate algos to be taking profit but look here we've got the the vegas wave right here we know statistically that the uh, second wave can can uh, turn at the 50 right this is not uncommon so we'd have us in, in effect a double bottom here at the 50 we have seen a lot of this in crypto where we're seeing shallow c waves they are not getting to a new low beyond if, if, assuming we're correcting here beyond the low of the a wave this is something that we're seeing quite quite commonly where we're getting this triangle pattern Right, it's 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 the stronger the market, the, the the buyers are impatient, so they're not allowing it to get down here before they start buying. But statistically, we know that it's much lower probability. Only twelve percent of wave twos uh, pivot here. Uh, at, a, at the 38, but we've already tested this. But then again, since that's a five wave, that would imply that this is not complete. So my expectation is that we're at least going to come back to test this low, or we're going to go all the way down here to the algo target and the 618. So this is a coin to be, you know, I mean, it certainly could. There, there's nothing that, that says that it couldn't just rip from here and, and move higher. No, no, that, I mean, that certainly is a potential scenario. But as a trader, all we can do is play the probabilities. The probability zone for entry is down here to at least check that low at the 50. Do we get five wave subdivision here in the C wave? That would be ideal. We don't always get it. And we have this tendency for the market to be shallow on the C waves because of the impatience of buyers. So here, I, I would not be a buyer here myself, even though we see this pattern. I'd want to at least see it come back down here and challenge that 50, knowing that I could easily come back down here for a C wave. So if I open this up and put, since I've got three, potentially three good pivots here, so if I put a pitchfork on that, so here's my A wave from my B. Well, you know, this this kind of gets my attention. So here here's the median line where we know we have a high probability. If if indeed we're going to get the move from so here would be the the corner pocket from the other side. So if we're going to get this right here, we've got an 80% probability of that making the median line. But this is a very steep here. This is where it, the pitchfork gives you a time element, right? So if it's going to get here, we're, we're almost, if it we're going to get to the median line here relative to the amount of time that we have, it, it's all the way down here. So this structure makes me look at that and go, well, you know, perhaps we have to look at an alternate. So I would take this and consider, for, first we're going to check for, for the shift median. I don't love that because it's too soon, it's too abrupt. That looks more interesting to me. So that's the modified shift where we go down 50% in price and over 50% in time. So that gets my attention. So that would be perfect structure. And it allows for the time component here. So potentially we double bottom here. We know it's very common. One of Andrew's trading principles is that you will very often see a pivot on the median line even though this is a modified shift median. So what, what we essentially have here, you can see the modified shift is very similar to a channel. Do you see that? It's almost identical to a channel. So if whether you want to work with a pitchfork or the, 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 the center line of the channel, you're in effect getting the same thing, right? So that's, that's the modified shift. So I would keep the pitchfork on it, and I would want to be aware. So I would alarm this at the 50. I want to see what kind of reaction we get here because you know, the perfect play is down here. Right? We got, so I have more confluence down here. I, have, I do have potentially the median line coming into play. I've got my negative 23. I've got my Vegas wave. I've got my hot box here that we love, the 61865. But, you know, again, nothing says that it has to get down here. Here's where maybe the oscillators can be helpful. You know, the, the unbalanced volume has gone negative. That's not surprising in the correction here. The RSI, we're basically sitting, you know, middle, middle of the range. Ideally, you'd see it at 30, at least come back and visit the 30 as we did over here. You know, the, and the idea being that we, as we get down there, we create the energy potential. You can think of it like stretching a band. We get, we get the energy potential for this to move from the lower end of the range to the upper end of the range. But again, it, it doesn't have to do it. It's just that can help us with our timing. So, if we were sitting here at the 50 and we were mid-range on the RSI, 
you know, I, I might not be as aggressive on the buy. If we get down here to the median line at the 61865 and I'm closer to 30 down here, now I'm going to be a little bit more confident, but I'm also going to like that better because the risk reward is better for me. So if I'm buying here at the 50 on a double bottom, which you know, certainly is, is possible, then my stop's got to be under the 65 to keep the risk under control. So given that, as a, if we just use our first algo target, if they're going to be buyers at the 50, well, there's, you know, it's not terrible. That's, that's, that's 4.27 to 1. I don't hate that. But, you know, so one thought is you, you, if you see a reaction there at the 50, you take a small position here small-ish relative to your account size, knowing that you may end up with another buy down here. And <clears throat> now we look at that. I like that even better. Because now I've got 12.5 to 1. So I've got to, get, I've got to give it a little wiggle room down here. So if I'm just on the other side of the 65, there's 12.5 to 1. So one scenario is you, you put an initial first buy here at the 50, assuming we get there and we see a reaction as we hit the median line, which is going to need to happen pretty soon. So that's one scenario, buy at the 50 on the assumption algos will defend this and be buyers there. You might look at a second entry at the 618, and in effect, what you'd be doing is averaging down your price. So you'd end up with something like this. So you, if you split the difference here, assuming you're buying an e equal size, e equal amounts, well, now, so now you've got seven, well, so let's bring this back down here. So now first algo target. So now you're at 7.2 to 1. Nothing wrong with that. I mean, that looks good. And then we put this in perspective. Remember, I'm just working off algo targets here. So we have additional targets up here. So here's our negative 618. We know that's very common. And additionally, if we start to put this in Elliott context, if this is our one wave and we're now trying to put in a two, well, we got to look at this on a larger scale and on the larger degree and say, well, if that's my one and this is going to be my two and there's my three, four, five. Well, I'm, I'm going to be anticipating subdivision into that third. So there's going to be opportunity along the way to catch the two or the four of the third. But keep in mind that if we look at our, at our Elliott targets relative to the FIB structure of where we could be going for that third, then I got to look at this. So, so I would go to my alternate tool. And I'd look at the length of one. Now I'm gonna be. I got to be hypothetical here. If we come down, let's say we come down and we revisit the, we test the, the the six one eight here. Now, interestingly, look. We, you know, it's always good to look left to look for some structure. So this potentially this pivot here, gives us some some structure here. Previous resistance potentially offering us support. But if we're gonna look at that as an entry here, if we get it, if it comes that low for us, well, there's the high probability zone here up for a third from an Elliott context. Now, now we're up here. Now look at that. Now we're at 14.6 to 1, stop under the 65. So that risk reward is very attractive. Do we get there? Well, we don't know, right? Remember, again, we've seen this very, very consistently. We've seen this shallow C wave. We've seen it. Now, I, I wouldn't jump on it till we came back down. I would want to see a visit of the C wave. We may not get it. I mean, for all we know, that's, that's the turn right there at the 38. That could easily go there. But I'd, I'd be more comfortable buying it here and even more comfortable buying it there. But this is, we've seen it all over crypto where we're getting this. We're getting the, the triangle. So there's the, the, that, that part of it. And then we're getting this. If I can get this to work for me. So we're getting this triangle pattern. It's, it's you know, I mean, we, technically we've, we've, t we've tapped the 50 here. So from an Elliott perspective, you're in that statistical zone here. But, th but given that five wave structure, I, that's very, very high probability that that's an A wave. So we're incomplete. But this C does not have to get down here. We might, t I mean, we're at the 38. That very well could be it. I'm just saying I wouldn't buy it there. But if that does start to go, I would be looking for that subdivision so let's say that, that it starts there and, and it doesn't come down to our, to our high probability zones that we would prefer. If this starts to go here, well, we're, 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 you know, we, we've got a third wave structure up here, a target way, way up here. So it's not going to go straight. We're going to expect subdivision there. So we'd be looking for, if that were it, we'd be looking for this to get us there in the third of that larger degree. So there's lots of opportunity. So if you miss it here, yeah, you, you, you miss the buy down here where it would be perfect to catch it there. But, you know, you, this, this is, you're rolling the dice here. Statistically, you know, you, so that's the difference between gambling and speculating, right? So 
when you're speculating, you're you're so if we use the gambling analogy, you sit at the table knowing the odds are against you. You're gambling. When you're speculating, you're looking for those times where the odds can be in your favor. And we know statistically we have higher probability down here at the between the 50 and the 618. So I'm not willing to gamble there on this. There's no reason to. There's too many other choices, too many other trades on the board for me to say, ah, I'm gonna I love this coin, so I'm gonna roll the dice here at the 38 on the assumption that I've got a truncated C wave and I'm going to pivot on the 38. It may happen if that's the case. I don't, I don't sweat it because now all I've got is more information. So if I'm going to go up and let's say we hit the, the algo target here, if I'm going to go up here and that's going to be my one wave, well, here's my 100% of the length of one. So I don't need to you know, worry about missing anything. I got huge upside here. Remember the, when, I, when we looked at the four hour, how, how much higher that could be. So if I go up here, then I'm looking for my two of that wave. So you never miss anything. You just get more information. You get more confirmation. Oh, guess that was the leading diagonal of a one wave. With this underway, well, I've got a new trend on my hands. So now I can project more confidently, and I can enter this more confidently because I know what I've got before me, be before my entry. I've got a solid five wave structure here that's giving me more confidence here. It doesn't guarantee a winner. It just gives me more confidence and higher probability if I'm buying into that too, given I've got a completed structure here that tells me leading diagonal, ABC, shallow C wave. I'm off for my one. I'm a buyer here all day long, but I'm not a buyer here, even though that may happen. All right, guys, that's, um, there's 15 minutes, 16 minutes. I'll, uh, I'll wrap it there for that one and be back uh, in a minute. We'll look at some other coins. Okay, that's it for now.